Now let's look at the transformation of these last two pieces on our basic table, and that's the transformation of t. We'll look at uh, the first power and then extend it out to other powers later in the work and class on the homework. And then the transformation of x prime, which is very important for transforming differential equations. Now, unlike our other examples we covered so far, this is not an exponential. It is a separated product of two functions. So, what we can do is rewrite this integral in a way that's easier to integrate, and that is by integration by parts. So, we want to choose a function that will differentiate it away to be simpler, and choose a function that can integrate to be simpler or just the same. So, let u equal t and dv equal e to the negative s t dt. We differentiate u and integrate dv. And we get the product u times v. from t equals 0 up to infinity minus the integral from 0 to infinity of v times du e to the negative s t divided by negative s t. Okay, well this integral works out quite nicely. It's the transformation of 1 with this extra negative uh, 1 over s. But let's first look at the limits on our our piece. This one is a little bit more complicated. We'll take the limit as t goes to infinity of infinity here times, and then that should be going to zero. So to think about this a little bit more clearly, I'm going to write it as t divided by negative s e to the positive s t. So that's my limit as t goes to infinity. And then when t goes to zero, I can plug that directly in. I get zero. For that limit. And then for my last integral, I'm going to pull out that constant 1 over s. And I have left integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative st dt, which is the transformation of y. Okay, so let's first deal with the limit. We have infinity on top, infinity on the bottom. Well, this sparks L'Hopital's rule, which says that a ratio of infinity over infinity can converge to a value as long as the ratio of the derivatives converge to a value. So first, we take the derivative of t, and that goes to a 1. Take the derivative of the exponential, and that goes to the same exponential spitting out another s. And that exponential is still going to infinity on the bottom. That 1 cops out. This goes to a constant, so we have a 1 divided by infinity. So by L'Hopital's rule, we get 0 for our limit, minus 0 for the other value plus 1 over s times a transform of 1, which is 1 over s, and that gives us a value of 1 over s squared. Again, recall, this is the transformation of 1. There. Now, this example, L'Hopital's rule, reminds us of the fact that our function t needed to be bounded by an exponential, which means that it can't grow any faster than the exponential e to the st. And because polynomials don't grow 
faster than exponentials. This is exponentially bounded, which means that the limit at infinity goes to zero and the rest converges. Okay, good check on that. Now, looking at the eigenvalue, or the singular value in this case, s equals zero is the value that makes this denominator zero or makes the transformation spike. But it's squared, which means that the eigenvalue has a multiplicity two. Well, if we have an exponential with eigenvalue zero, that's e to the zero t, that's a one. And if we have a multiplicity two, then we get two copies, a one and a t. So here is the first copy of the root s equals zero or lambda equals zero or r equals zero, whatever letter you want to use for the eigenvalue. Zero eigenvalue gives us a one. First copy, second copy gives us a t. Huh, kind of cool. Now, let's finish off with uh, transforming a derivative.